There are few who can claim the title of king. Others are mongrels, pretenders of the name. There are only a few seats at this table, and you are wrong if you think that you can just sit down and join. Long story short, you need to be strong to sit at this table, and who others but the Spinosaurus might be one of the strongest of them all. Debatable topics aside, compared to the other Apexes, it does have a rather unique appearance, but that doesn't stop him from claiming his title as king. So let's find out just how this creature has claimed its title as king. Hello, my name is Alan Wokter, and in this video we are going to look at how to properly fight as a Spinosaurus. Now, I have done this type of video before, however, just like your PvP skills, it is outdated. And speaking of PvP skills, if there are any other Spinosaurus men who disagrees with what I say, then bite me. It was lag issues and my opponent was probably playing with a toaster. Also, the stuff I'm about to talk about will probably be outdated sooner or later, so take what I say as temporarily strategy. The topics of discussion in this video will firstly be the arsenal, though I won't go too deep into that, uh, you will know why later. Then we will go over the type of subspecies you should choose to grow, the fighting style of the Spinosaurus and its terrain compatibility. Then we will go over to the fights you can find yourself in, and remember the Spinosaurus is semi-aquatic, so we will go over the fights you can find yourself in both land and in water, and of course the different opponents you might need to face. And at the end I'll summarize. Again, I'm not gonna go too deep into the Spinosaurus arsenal. If you click this video, you are probably already familiar to just what the Spinosaurus has to cook with. I will say that the Spinosaurus arsenal aren't really consistent. What I mean about that is, it always changes depending on who you're fighting, what you're fighting, and where you're fighting. Aside from the ones I crossed out, these are the abilities that always changes depending on your opponent and location. There are different ways you can fight as Spinosaurus, and depending on how you choose to fight, I will also go into what you should equip of abilities. When it comes to subspecies, I am torn between the land speed and the defense build. You see, it again, it depends on how you plan to fight and who and what and where you fight. I will say that the land build are better suited for a more aggressive fighting style, while the defense subspecies is better for a more defensive fighting style. The water speed aren't really that necessary since you have abilities to make up for it. I talked on and on about how the Spinosaurus has different ways to fight, and I think it's about the time I explain the fuck I'm talking about. The Spinosaurus has one of the best default stats in the game, meaning he can win most slug vests he's in. However, that changes quickly when we talk about a creature with similar stats as the Spino. The Spino lacks in speed, but his potential in maneuverability are one of the best in the game. Think of it as a contrast to the T-Rex. The T-Rex will always want to put you in a head-to-head -head clash. The Spino's fighting style are similar to that that he wants to overpower your opponent in a slugfest. However, unlike the T-Rex, the Spino lacks in damage output. Making the Spino a bit more of a perseverance type of creature. And that also means that his type of slugfest, unlike the T-Rex, needs a bit more finesse. By the way, I just want to say it now while I have the chance, I really miss the Spinal Bleed. The Spinal's terrain compatibility are kinda all rounder. He is a semi-aquatic, meaning he can be on both land and in water. In a fighting sense though, I will say that he can fight pretty much everywhere as long as the player knows what he's doing. I will say that high stats opponents does require a bit more open areas. When it comes to mid and lower tiers, then you should use the terrain to limit their movement. Open fields can still work, but you are putting yourself in a dangerous spot. If you know how to do things but are still unsure about your PvP skill, then you can always have a river or a water source nearby, just in case you need a get out card. Now what everyone has been waiting for, the fights. And let's get the big ones out of the way, shall we? Literally, fighting apexes and or high tiers. Now just like what I said before, when it comes to other high tier animals, you should try and avoid a head-to-head clash, and rather do a slugfest but more fineness. I'm just gonna say it now, but when it comes to other high tier creature, you should try and make it a battle of turn radius. Always do that. I know that the stomp looks and sounds attractive, but when it comes to fighting Apex, you really need the extra boost in turn radius. 
The default maneuverability on Spinosaurus are already good, but it doesn't give you a clear edge over your opponent. And being able to turn around on a dime may help you dodge fatal attacks, like a bone break or a charge up bleed attack. Basically what I'm saying, you need to ride that apex, stay on that ass, stay away from its main weapon. After all, having better damage output doesn't mean shit if you can't land them. There's a lot going on in this phase. You need to do good combos with your claws and bite, and also move according to your opponent so you don't end up in front of their main weapons. Also, I just wanted to go back on the topic of subspecies. Remember what I said about that the defensive subspecies are much better for a defensive fighting style? Unfortunately, the Spinos lack in speed does make it difficult for it to keep up with, even with other apexes. This gets even worse when the subspecies you chose aren't meant to do a lot of running around. This is just something to keep in mind if you do choose a defense subspecies, that you might have to let a lot of people escape. Now to be completely honest, the land build Spino aren't that much faster than its defensive counterpart, however it does make the idea of chasing your opponents more realistic I would say. However, view it as this way. If your opponents are clearly faster than you, that means that you can definitely win over them in terms of a slugfest, you just need to do it correctly. To be completely honest, staying on a dinosaur's tail aren't completely necessary for every dinosaur. On the other hand, if you do wish to have the best odds to win a fight no matter what creature, you should perform this, I don't know, strategy. There are few creatures who can compete with the Spino in terms of turn radius, and among Apexes even less. You have the health and tankiness, but because of your lack of speed and damage output, basically what I'm trying to get at is, no matter what opponent, no matter what Apex you are facing, you should always try and make it a contest of turn radius. No matter what Apex is, I do recommend this arsenal. This arsenal are best suited for a contest of turn radius, and as long as you can perform the strategy correctly, then you have the capability of winning most fights. If you have a chosen stomp over this traction, then you need to be selective when to use it. Without traction, tail riding will be more difficult. If anything, you might have to rely on the smart move button, and then predict your opponent's movement, and then just hit them when you can. I'm not saying that this stomp is bad, I'm just saying you need to be smart when using it. Before I go into what to do against pseudo apexes, against low tiers, I just want to say it right now, low tiers alone aren't too much of a trouble. In this situation, it is actually good to have the stomp ability, however, it's not really that conspicuous, so it is good to use for baiting the creature in. Against low tiers, your claws and tail are the best option. You can use the stomp ability too, but it requires a bit more timing and luck. Pouncers and grabbers aren't too much of a problem. If a pouncer pounces on you, I would just shake two times. Then I would hit the stomp button, and when the pouncer releases from the lack of energy, then he will get stomped. I'll say it again, against low tears, then tail and claws remains your best option. And stomp if you can land a blow. There are ways for you to make it easier for yourself. You can either one go into water, or you can place yourself in an area where they can only attack you from one direction, making it easier for you to predict their movement. All you need to do is to be ready, and when you see they come, you only need to do the timing correctly and... Get rid of the pest. Low tears are never a problem when they come solo. As a pack, then you only need to do the same stuff but with more targets. If anything, it might be easier to deal with low tears as a Spino compared to a Rex. Do not underestimate the perseverance of a Spino. Not only are your tail placed in an angle where it's easier to deal with smaller opponents, most of the Spino's abilities are directed for a more endurance type of fights. A Spino can keep on fighting, even when he's at death's door. 
Also, question for my viewers. In terms of stat, what tier is the Rakosaurus? Probably not a high one. Pseudo Apexes are a bit more different. There are multiple ways you can fight Pseudo Apexes. One is the easy one. You can just overpower them in a head to head clash. The other option are just in case if they plan to utilize their speed advantage. Claw at them and fight them, tail with them, all until they are dead. You don't really need to do the contest of turning radius with them, however it can make it easier for you to have the extraction so you are able to keep up with their speed. By the way, this is the arsenal I recommend against pseudo apexes, though the other one can also work, depending on how you like the fight. They are usually faster than you, and if they do get a few tail rides hit in you, then even you need to be concerned. This becomes even more annoying if they have other abilities like Bone Break or Bleed. Fortunately, if they do have any of those annoying abilities, just be glad that your stats are better than them. If they do apply those annoying abilities, then you usually can survive until they run out. The duration of the ability, I mean. Also, just ignore the cat, he think he's irrelevant. Simply put, against pseudo apexes, all you need to do is just keep up with their speed and then just outmatch them. Overpower them in raw strength. Besides agility and speed, you don't really have too much to worry about pseudo apexes. And again, what I say about low tiers, they're usually more of a bother than a threat. Solo that is. If they do come in the pack, then you can start worrying. The beautiful thing about Spinosaurus is that you can just go into water and suddenly the enemies you need to meet becomes even less. You are safer in the water while the land animals need to fight among themselves. The few creatures you do fight in water are usually the crocs. There are actually a rather simple strategy to deal with crocs. Crocs are a menace in water, they are high speed and high damage, however with the updates, they are now heavily focused ambush predators, meaning that in a head-to-head -head clash they will fall short, especially with their rather low health. For water fights, I recommend this arsenal. It will give you the speed you need to dodge your opponent's attack and also the bulk to tank one of those, and don't be scared to tank one of those hits. All you need to do is keep applying pressure on the opponent. Keep applying pressure, don't let him gather himself and do a counter attack. Against higher stats semi aquatics like the Dinochirus or the modern Dinosuchus, a different approach needs to be taken. If you can, then you should try and fight them on land. On land, you should have the advantage against both of these creatures. Maybe more so Dinosuchus, but Dinochirus should also be a weak against the, the tail riding. If the fight does end up in water, I'm actually not too sure on how their odds will be. To be completely honest, it's kinda... it depends on the player. It really does. In water, at least if you have the ability for swimming, then your abilities to swim should be somewhat similar. The spine only needs to stay at the top because he needs to worry about the, the spine. Besides that, I said the odds for winning this are pretty much 50-50. It really depends on the player. In other words, there aren't really any sure ways to win against a similar stat creature in water. Also, just ignore the third part here. I swear, it's impossible for Battle Titans player to not interfere in a 1v1. Seriously. Put that on the list for impossible challenges for Battle Titans players. Now, I will say this. 
taking on multiple opponents, especially those opponents who are at equal stats with you, that is never a good idea. If you see multiple opponents with similar stat as you, always back away. The odds are against you and you really shouldn't do this. You are most likely to lose. This is by the way also a reason to why you should make sure that you have a water source nearby. If you have a water source nearby, then your attackers might not even bother attacking you. They will know that the moment they show aggression you will just fall to the water. However, I am not one of those guys. When you do fight multiple opponents, you need to rely on that they actually are two opponents. By that I mean, they are teammates, they don't want to do any friendly fire, and that is something you should use against them. In a fight with opponents with similar stat as you, I recommend this arsenal. You need to utilize your superior turning speed to the max. You already need to put a lot of effort just killing one of these fuckers, and now you need to do it for two. Though it's only greedy to try and kill both, you should target the weakest one and then go for him. Again, you don't need to kill both. Once you kill one of their teammates, you're basically won. After all, they were the one who couldn't kill you in a 2v1. So to summarize, against Apexes, try to stick on their ass. Ride that apex. Do not let go from riding that apex. Stay on their tail. Stay away from their main weapon. And then continue to tail ride them. You see the spinal claws? They are meant to grip that ass. And your mouth? Keep biting it. Against pseudo apexes, just overpower the poor fucker. They will soon find out that they are not that guy and will have to back off so they don't die unless they are willing to go all full guns and blazing. Against low tears, just tail smack them or bitch slap them. Bait them into your weapons. They are weak, they only need a few good slaps and smack. Use the terrain to limit their movement if you need to. If they really want to get all up into that, then just stomp them. Against most semi-aquatics, just apply a lot of pressure to them. In water, you are one of the better brawlers. So that's where you need to force them into a head-to-head -head clash. Against creatures of similar stats, however, I'd say then you can still do the head-to-head -head clashing, however, the odds of winning that are 50-50. Depends on player, that's all I can say. Now if there are multiple opponents, if they are on low tiers, then you can fight them. But if they are of similar stats as you, then the odds are against you, no one will shame you for running away in a 2v1. But if you insist, utilize the fact that they don't want to do any friendly fire, and then just dance around them. Utilizing your better turning radius is key to winning this fight. Target one, and when he's low enough, that's when you can go for the kill. Now, I should probably say that this combat video weren't planned, so the usual combat video will continue as usual. I just did this one because I felt like it. In any case, if you have any specific creature you want me to cover, just go to my community post. There you will find a dedicated post where you can suggest your creature in the comment section. Also make sure that you read the extra info on the post, just in case. With that, I have nothing more to share and I bid you guys adieu. Goodbye!